for you everyone i hope you're doing fine i think i was on a big break and now i am back fresh and ready for new content if you're new here this is medic academy where we share information in health sector that is focusing on uh, on causes that are talking about health at least simply all causes that are in health sector and in today's class i would like to take you through status asthmatic I know from this name, you're able to see the word asthma there, and I'm trying to break it in simplest terms possible so that we can all be on the same page. So welcome and feel free to subscribe, please comment, and remember to share this with your friends, your classmates, and anyone that you know that you feel may benefit from these classes. They are very simplified, and they're actually very quick for you to just get the point home and enable you to do further researches. Please keep on reading further. Do not stick to just what I teach here. Please research and find new information that you feel that I have left out. Well, so without further ado, let me go straight to the main. What is the definition of uh, status asthmaticus? As from the name status asthmaticus, there is the word asthma. So this is actually a severe and a persistent form of asthma that is not responding to conventional therapy or the management that is given to the asthmatic patient. So this attack is also known to last longer than 24 hours. So if you have an asthmatic client that has been on recurrent episodes or attacks and you've been managing this client repetitively and uh, you are realizing that it's not responding to the therapy that you've been giving to calm down the episodes, then you could consider the possibility that this client could be complicating to the state of status asthmatic. Is what we call the causes and in the causes the causes because this is a complication of asthma then in this case they will copy or they will look more of the same like what causes or brings up asthmatic attacks so we have the case of infection and most of the time these infections we are referring to the upper respiratory tract infections then we have anxiety which is one of the major causes of asthmatic attacks Nebulizer abuse, where someone has been overusing it or misusing it without using the required prescription. And in this case, the person can develop resistance and as a result, complicate with the status asthmaticus. Dehydration and other irritants that can bring up an asthmatic attack. We have pathophysiology of this status asthmaticus. How does it begin and how does it progress and so on and so forth. So first, remember this is a complication of asthma and as a beginner is that it begins with the presence of a trigger. So the triggers of any attack for the asthmatic client could be a case of the, the infection that you've mentioned, it could be irritants, maybe dust or pollen grains or meal that tends to trigger to them some of these attacks. And when this trigger is present and, in, and uh, triggers that process that is initiating the asthmatic episode, then there's a process of inflammation that sets in. And this inflammatory process is characterized by several signs and symptoms like fever or temperature rising, this tenderness, this pain, and so on. And as this is happening, then there's constriction of what we call uh, bronchiolar smooth muscles or what we call bronchospasms. So in general, the bronchioles tend to constrict or reduce in diameter. Then as this is happening, the swelling of the bronchial mucosa, this is the covering that is covering our bronchioles or our airways. And as this mucosa is swelling, it is also making it worse because the diameter is becoming smaller and smaller. And so it's making breathing difficult for our client. And because this is also an inflammatory process, we have now excessive production of thickened secretions. And these secretions make it more harder and our client becomes worse when it comes to difficulty in breathing because it is blocking these airways. And as a result, we end up with what we call a manifestation of respiratory acidosis, a state where the respiratory function of our client is weakening or it is becoming worse and it is characterized by signs and symptoms such as uh, the difficulty of breathing that is worsening and we have an issue where maybe then where you're doing your, your pulse oximetry and it is showing very poor percentages or you're trying to check into their chest expansions and you find that it is not adequate enough 
So I will discuss further about the acidosis part as we are going more into signs and symptoms. But this is just a summary of the pathophysiology of this status asthmaticus. So this is how it changes. Like as you can see, this is the airway, which is now more obstructed. And we describe that this status asthmaticus pathophysiology is coping more of an inflammatory process. And in it, this is the bronchospasm, where we are now seeing demonstrated by the contracted smooth muscles. Then we have the blood vessels, which are coming in as carrying more of the immune cells, that is white blood cells being concentrated to this area. There's decrease in the lumen diameter, that is now our bronchioles or the airways, where the lumen is becoming narrower and is making it difficult for air to properly flow in and out. Then there's the inflammation that is now bringing in the swelling, so making our mucosa to swell and, uh, and be and I mean, and make the diameter to be smaller, and then mucus production, which is now make the bringing up the blockage at I mean aspect. Okay, so what are the clinical manifestations for for the patient that you'll be dealing with who are showing new state of asthmatic state? Number one, we talked about the difficulty in breathing. Others prefer to say labored breathing. So this is a client who is showing new signs as if they are suffocating or they are not able to breathe I mean, properly or comfortably. Then they show you signs of prolonged exhalation where after breathing in, they seem not able to let out that air comfortably. Then we have engorged neck vein. This is a state where they are really, really struggling to, to, to breathe and to let the air out. And most of them end up even using the accessory muscles. And the lung sounds that you'll be hearing as you're checking on this patient is what you call the wheezes. And here we are, also some may be showing new signs of impending respiratory failure, for example, with an indicator of increased uh, carbon dioxide pressure. So this is mostly you get to find this when a patient is done a arterial blood gas test. When you do that, you're able to see what is the concentration of carbon dioxide and the concentration of oxygen in your patient blood. So able to get the pressure of carbon dioxide in blood and the pressure of oxygen in blood. At the same time, you can see the blood pH, is it acidic or is it alkaline? And because this is a respiratory failure, then you are more to see of a respiratory acidosis as opposed to alkalosis. Management, how do we manage this? So number one, because it's more of like an emergency setting, there'll be administration of short-acting beta adrenergic agonist and corticosteroids because you want to handle uh, the triggers that are coming up that are in initiating the inflammatory process for your client. So beta adrenergic agonists are the best for this case. Then there's oxygen therapy. Remember, we are talking about difficult in breathing. The patient is showing signs of suffocation. Some can give you indicators of dyspnea, central cyanosis, and even hypoxemia. Please put your patient on oxygen and monitor. Avoid sedative. Remember, this patient is already struggling to breathe. So you see, when you put sedative, they have an effect of bringing what we call respiratory depression, and you don't want to put that state into Client. So avoid any form of sedative in this case. Then if there's no response to the management that you put your patient on, you can opt to put your patient on hospitalization so that you can monitor them further. Remember we said this episode tends to last more than 24 hours. Then monitor the patient until you're able to see that this asthmaticus has been put under control. Your patient is speaking when it comes to breathing rate and symmetry and so on. You're able to identify that the oximetries are also picking up and the patient is off risk. Then assess skin tagger for any signs of dehydration. Remember dehydration, we said it's also one of the uh, the risk factors or the signs that, I mean, are the factors that can contribute to status asthmaticus. Put your patient on fluids. You want to prevent dehydration, you want to loosen the secretions in the airways, and you want to facilitate Expectation. Remember, there's excess uh, secretions in the airway. So you want this, these secretions to be loosened up and that they can cough it out and release it. So encourage fluids. It's one of the best remedies when you're dealing with such cases. Then let them rest. You know, don't want to, use, don't want to overuse their energy. Let them allow to be in a bed rest and to conserve this energy. Then the environment. Please ensure the room is well-maintained, free from any irritants. If you find that there's any agent that can trigger the attack again, please get rid of it. 
If it's pillows that are kind of like allergic in nature, please get rid of such pillows. Just use comfortable, we say of cotton pillows that don't have the ability to trigger any attacks. So that's it, guys. Like I said, we are using this platform to help us understand the medical content in a very simplified manner. And in this case, I welcome you to like this channel, to comment, to subscribe, and please share with any other student that you know that may be in need of such content. Welcome, and once again, bye-bye.